finally back on the right path now. We've had a couple of mishaps back down there. Wasn't sure which way we were going. It's like there's loads of signposts and they dry up and then it's a bit of a lottery which way you go, but we found the right path now. That was tough. Just come up a path, we're zigzagging at the side of the mountain. Currently on 1400 meters and rising. It's leveled out a little bit now, thank God. this big restaurant and it's got cable cars and all that here. So we've got a large beer, grocer beer, one each. Ah. Well deserved that is, well deserved. Look at that for a view. We're gonna drink this and get back on the trail. We have just left the um, Ampechley cable car station. Had a quick beer, bit of a rest. We're back on the trail. So we've got about four hours to get to the Rashepi Pass. We better get a push on. Tough hike. 
Prova a cabeça. Tell you what, Wales and the UK could take a leaf out of Switzerland's book and do this. Check this out, they got a fire pit. They got some benches, like picnic benches. They got a wood store there. And they've got a wood store over here as well. So basically it'll stop you or stop people lighting fires randomly around this area or whatever it is. Very cool. Great idea that, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. I think Switzerland got this outdoor malarkey uh, lick like, you know. Really impressed with this place. Amazing. Just making our way up to Oberebs. Might have a drink. We'll have a look now and um, we're also going to ask if um, the Rochetti Pass is open just to make sure hopefully it is so we can carry on. Just left that Oberebs ski hut. We got talking to this Swiss guy. What a lovely bloke. He's had a bit of bad luck like and with illness and that. And he even offered to pay for me and Simon to stay there. 80 francs each. We can't take that off him. Plus, we gotta we gotta be on the trail early in the morning because we have to get back to Zurich. But I tell you all the people you meet. Hiking, just Amazing, awesome. Lovely book, wasn't he? Yeah, well, top guy.
I think we're going to hike another hour and a half, something like that, and then call it a day and find a camp spot. God, it's warm. Roasting. Look at that view. We're not far off 2,000 meters now, and we're going to follow this path over there. You can probably see it, and then we're going to make our way up, up around there, maybe a bit further. And see if there's a decent pitch for the night. We don't want to be walking a lot more now. We've been walking since seven o'clock this morning. <laughs> and we, we are bushed. But we've done about 30 miles in two and a half days, something like that. Um, over two, 2,500 meters elevation. So it's a lot. I gotta be fair, we're quite proud of ourselves. We've done a, it's been hard at times, but very, uh, very enjoyable. And um, we're quite proud, to be honest, that we've done a lot in such a short space of time. But like I said, we're gonna follow our, the path up now. Oh, I'm so tired, I can't even speak. But, and yeah, see where, see where we can pitch, basically. Right, onwards again. We got snow.
and I think that's a Rochetli Pass. Have a look at this place. That is beautiful, absolutely awesome. It's mad to think that last night we were camping up there in the Foo Pass. Unreal. Right, we're making our way down the Rochetti Pass. There's mammoths everywhere. You can probably hear them. There's a there's a hut down there. We're gonna go down there now and hopefully pitch the tent by there somewhere. Well that's the plan, let's see if it's um See if it's level and flat when we get there. Hopefully it is. Me and Simon have made our way further over on the Rochetli Pass. That's where we gotta head up to tomorrow and then down to Lintal. I think it's about three or four hours hike. But we are gonna camp here tonight. And have a look at this, I'll do a 360. One of the coolest camp spots we've ever been on. It's even better because you didn't pay for it. pretty cold out here is uh, the wind is blowing from that direction up there that's the Rochetti Pass going up there in the morning um, the winds coming straight down into this basin and it's just cold so I've got loads of layers on um, so it should be okay yeah we've got 
Um, once we get on top of there tomorrow, I think we've got about um, a three and a half, four hour walk, I think. Um, I know once you get over, it's a steep ascent all the way down to the town of Lintel, so it's going to be fun. But once it's finished, I'll be the third section of the Via Alpina done, so fingers crossed. We get up there and back down in one piece. But it's been awesome, it's been an awesome three days, four days, well, four days tomorrow. Yeah, it's been brilliant, like so. Really good. Slowly making our way up the Rochetney Pass. We camped down there somewhere. Slowly making our way up the path. But it looks like this the path goes alongside the snow gully, so we might not even have to go through any of the snow. So yeah, hopefully that'll be uh, that'll be good. And I can already see the sign at the top, so not too far to go now. Gotta be worth a pick, do not it?
Well, what a descent that was. I'm not going to lie, that was absolutely horrible. That's the hardest mountain descent I've ever done. That was brutal. My toes are absolutely sore as hell. I've been feeling pretty good up to this point, but my, at the moment my toes are really sore. It was a long, a long old descent down. And uh, we still got a fair walk into Lintal. So, but I can see houses and I can see civilization. So, it's all good. And almost three sections of the Via Alpina in the history books. Absolutely fantastic. I can't stress enough how, how good this place is for hiking. It's just amazing. But I recommend anyone come and try it if you're fit enough to do it. Brilliant. Smile. Right, that's the third section of the Via Alpina in the books, Elm to Lintal. Me and Simon are on the train now, heading back to Zurich. So we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.